And we have now reached our last part of our study of circles, and that is something completely different than what we've been studying, and now we're just going to talk about the equation of a circle. The equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals radius squared. And the h and the k would be the center of the circle. This hopefully is somewhat familiar to you because we, when we studied the vertex form of a parabola in algebra, the h and the k were also used there. That was where the vertex of our graph would show up. So now we're using h and k as the center of our circle. So here's our question. Write the equation of a circle with the center at 3, negative 5 and a radius of 7. Our formula is h squared. I'm going to try and color code this a little bit better for you so you see where everything comes from. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. equals radius squared. The reason I color coded that is sometimes those minus signs throw people off a little bit. What we're actually going to do is we're just going to substitute in for h and k. The x minus and the y minus are already part of our equation. So I have x minus, what is my value of h? My value of h is 3 plus y minus my k value, which is negative 5, squared equals radius squared. So writing this in simplified form would be x minus 3 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals 49. So if you want to think of this in a bit of a shorthand way, the center of the circle is always going to be opposite what shows up in the formula. So as we look at this, right here my h value looks like negative 3. The h value is actually 3. Right here the k value looks like positive 5. The k value is actually negative 5. Now where does that actually come from? Well let's just look just quickly at an idea which might help you understand that. If I solve this for 0, I would add 3 to both sides and we would get x equals 3 or h equals 3. In this case y plus 5 equals 0. Minusing the 5 we get y equals negative 5. So our h and k are 3 and negative 5. Write the equation of a circle with the center at the origin at a diameter of 24. The first thing we need to remember is what are the coordinates of the origin? The origin's coordinates are 0, 0. Now the equation for a circle, if you remember, does not use the diameter. It uses the radius. So we need to find the radius, which for this problem is going to then be 12, because it's half the diameter. We now have enough information to write our equation x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals radius squared. Or simply, x squared plus y squared equals 144. Here's another question. A circle with a diameter 10 has its center in the first quadrant the lines y equal negative 3 and x equals negative 1 are tangent to the circle. Write an equation for the circle. This may seem pretty difficult, but using graph paper, actually this is a pretty straightforward question. So let's start to put some of this information on the picture. A circle with a diameter 10, which means it has a radius of 5. So we know we have a radius of 5. 
and we have two lines, y equal negative 3 and x equals negative 1. This is the first part you're going to need to recall some previous knowledge, and that is the line y equals negative 3 is a horizontal line at negative 3. And x equals negative 1 is a vertical line at negative 1. It says it has a radius of 5, and it's in the first quadrant. That means that our circle has to be somewhere in that area right there. So what we need to just realize at this point is simply what our radius is. Our radius is 5. If I go up 5 from the green line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's somewhere around where my center of my circle is going to be. And I go over 5 from my vertical line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I actually will hit the center of my circle. Where those two red lines cross each other is the center of the circle. My circle has a radius of 5. So if I go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, left 5, right 5, and up 5, I actually have the points on my circle. If I drew a circle that contained those three points, I would have my circle. Therefore, the center of my circle is at 4, 2. The key here was to understand that this line is y equals negative 3, and that this line is x equals negative 1. Writing the equation is easy here. x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 25, which is simply radius squared. Graph. Y equal, excuse me, x minus 4 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 25. The easiest thing is to start with the radius. The radius squared is 25. Therefore, the radius is just 5. Now, if you remember what I talked about a little bit ago, to find our coordinates, I actually would do x minus 4 equals 0, so I would get 4 for one point. y plus 3 equals 0, and negative 3 for my other point. I now know where my circle should be. It should be over 4 and down 3. We know our radius is 5, so we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the right 5, down 5, and to the left 5. Now, the best of your ability, try and draw yourself a circle. Mine turned out a bit like an egg, but you get the idea. Artistic ability is not, cr is not graded, but do you see any problems with what I would have done here? Well, you should, and that is that my circle has to hit at least those four points. So I need to go down a little bit here, and that would be a lot better. Just like when we talk about parabolas don't have any straight lines and never curve back to themselves, the circle should look like a circle and for sure hit at least our four points that we're using to make the circle itself. Here's one more question. Graph x squared plus y minus 2 equals 16. I'm guessing at this point you can probably find the radius out pretty easily. This one's a little bit trickier because you notice by the x there is no other points. So that means our first point's at 0. Our second point is at the opposite here, if we solved it like we did in the last one, and we get 0, 2. That means we go over 0 and up 2. Then we have a radius of 4. Now it's time to try and draw another circle. That was a little bit better than my last attempt. 
but I did miss it on the top here, so I should take the time to fix that because it is important to make sure that we always hit those four points that we're using to make our circle. Try not to have any flat spots and take a little bit of time. And if you want to be really good, get yourself out a compass and you can draw a circle that would be perfect. If you have any questions on these or anything else that we've learned in this lesson, make sure to stop in and ask me as we've now finished chapter 10.